Hey YouTube, I'm APC, and today I'm making another tutorial for you guys. In today's tutorial, I'm going to be talking about how to create a flashlight effect. It's used often in 2D RPG games where you, if you're in a dark area, it'll show a small light around you. I know it, it does that in Legend of Zelda, and I'm sure it does in a lot of other games, but either way, I'm sure you will find it, find it interesting and helpful. So, um, I'm doing this tutorial without any preparation at all. I've made this tutorial before on one of my other channels, or actually my, my other Sinforge Games channel. But soon after I made that, I found a far more efficient way of doing it that looked a lot better and required a lot less code. So that's what I'm going to show you today. So, first thing to do is create a sprite, what I'm going to call it SPR Darkness. Or SPR Dark, I guess, might have been more efficient, but I'm calling it SPR Darkness. So, now, for the sprite, I'm just making it 32 by 32, I suppose. The bigger you make it, the less memory is going to be used. The smaller you make it, the more memory is going to be used. But the smaller it is, the nicer the effect looks, and the bigger it is, the worse the effect looks. So I'm going to just make it like that. Now I'm going to create object obj darkness. Let's call it obj dark. Darkness is too much to say, too much of a mouthful. All right, set the sprite, and um, we'll go in the step event. Now this is a very simple algorithm. Actually, well, let's go ahead and create the creation. Event. All right, so the way this is going to work is there's going to be an area around us where we can see perfectly. Then there's going to be a gradient where we can from that switches from where we can see perfectly to where we can see nothing at all. And there's point where we can see nothing at all. So I'm going to say radius min and radius max. Radius min is the how far away the radius is to where we can see everything. And then radius max is how far away it is until our visibility visibility completely stops. So there'll be a gradient between radius min and radius radius max that will slowly diminish our sight. So we'll set radius min over 64, set radius max over 256. Usually I have values prepared that work, but I don't know if this will work or not. I'm just um, trusting my um, feeling for it there. All right. So now I'm going to have a algorithm that will change transparency of this particular sprite depending on the radius min and radius max. All right, so image alpha, because that's what we're going to be changing with the darkness. We're going to have the darkness completely cover the room. And then if image alpha, if we're close to the player, we want image alpha to equal zero, meaning it's invisible, meaning we can see whatever's behind it. And if it's farther away from the player, it wants to be equal one. So image alpha. Now I'm going to do linear equation, basically. So, uh, let's see. I want to depend on the point distance between the this box and the player. So I'm going to do, use, use the function point distance. There are several functions you can use, but I'm going to use this one for reasons I'll explain later. Distance. The b benefit to point distance versus uh, distance object or distance to point is that this will, I can select both points with this function. So the point one, I want to be the center of this block. So x, y, the top left corner of this particular block. So we're going to add half our sprite width to both of them. Half our sprite height, I guess. So x plus equals sprite width divided by 2. And then y plus sprite height divided by 2. All right. So then next to x, y, next x, y coordinate is going to be how, um, which, um, uh, what the other point is that we're measuring distance for. So normally it would be the player, so that, that way the, the flashlight thing will follow the player. But in this case I'm going to make it mouse, because we didn't make a player and I don't feel like making a player. So we're going to say mouse y and mouse x. So those are the x and y coordinates of the mouse. If you were one to follow player, you just simply said, say obj player dot x or something along those lines. So this is what we want, depend, want it to depend on. So, um, I think I'll just write down the equation now and then we'll figure it out from there. So I'm going to subtract radius max, radius min, sorry. I'm going to subtract radius min from that. I'm going to put the whole thing in parentheses. Then I'm going to divide it by the difference between radius max and radius min. So radius max minus radius min. And I think that's everything. So um, we're only working in the gradient area, and the rest will just solve itself, basically. So we're going to call the start of the gradient zero zero. That's where we want alpha to be zero, and the end of it to be one. So when um, so I want this top part. 
So we're dividing it by something, but I want the top part to be zero when um when we're at the point point where we can see everything. So in order to make point distance zero, we subtract radius min. So when it's exactly at the minimum radius radius where we can see everything, um, then that's when we want it to be zero. So that's why I, I subtract radius min there, and then I divide it by the the distance of the gradient area, which is radius max minus radius min. Um, I'm trying to think of how I could explain that better. I hope that makes sense. So now um, that's all taken care of. Now I'm going to create another ob object that we're going to call OBJ spawn. Now you could just hold and shift and create them all throughout the room, but especially if you have a really big room, this is going to be um, really annoying. No, 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 no sprite. This doesn't have a sprite. All I want to do in the creation is create everything for the room. So I'm going to create a for loop. Um, I'll explain what a for loop is in a second. Alright. So, there are several types of loops. For loops is one of them. And the way you do for loops is, is you have three sections. Once There's the um, initialization, the condition, and the increment. Okay, so, the in so in initialization, you create a new variable that you're going to use to check whether the loop is done. So, and the condition is um, the thing that needs to remain true while, while the loop continues and the increment is what happens every time it goes to the loop. So right now, so it starts out with i equals zero. Then it'll check whether this is true. Whether this, that, that is true. Then it'll go through the code. Once it's done with this code, it'll go through the increment. So it'll add that much to the to i. Then it'll go back down to the code and it'll repeat it again. Then it'll go through the increment and it'll, and it'll keep going code, increment, code, increment until the condition is false. Once the condition is false, it'll exit out of the loop and we'll get at this point. Alright, i is going to represent the x value that we're spawning things at. So it's going to go start at 0, and then in this code it's going to spawn the complete column at x equals 0. Then once we're finished, that once that column is finished, this code will be done, and then it'll move on to the next x value, so it'll add the sprite width of our darkness, which is the width of that particular column because that's the width of the sprite of darkness and then um, it'll make another column and then it'll continue making columns and go moving uh, this moving the, um, the sprite width to the right until we're finished with all the columns and then this will be done because then we would have reached the room width okay all right so now in here we're making the columns so we're gonna make another for loop which can be very similar except in this case we're gonna be moving the uh, y value down so starting off j equals zero and then j needs to remain less than the and then the last step is the increment so we want to increase by the height of that sprite so j plus equals obj dark dot sprite height alright and now we want to create a new object for the for darkness at that particular spot so instance create um, i comma j because that's the values that we got from the loops comma obj dark alright so it'll start at the top left corner. Then it'll it'll um, go through this loop, which will all start at top left corner, and then it'll create a darkness spot at the top, at the top left corner. And then it'll return to the loop, and the loop will say increase the y y by the sprite height. So it'll move down one and create another one, and then it'll keep creating more and more, going down down vertically, until it reaches the bottom. And once it reaches the bottom, it will 
this condition will no longer be true, so it will move back up to this for loop, which will go through the increment and increase the width by, width by 1, or increase the x by, by the width, I guess, and then it will move down the next column, and it will continue that process until the entire room is full, and then will the whole room will be full of darkness. So this, this bond will make the room full of darkness. Alright, let's test it out. And here you have it. The room is full of darkness, and the transparency depends on where our mouse is based on the radius min and the radius max. Let's see. Let me try something. Um, I'm going to go into debug mode so I can show you something. Alright, so the nice thing about debug mode is I can pause the game. So, if I hold it right here, I can pause it. And there we go. Now I can show you what I'm trying to say. So, um, remember, in OBD Darkness, the, do the blocks that are created all over the place, we set two variables, the min and the max. So, our mouse x is right here in the center right now. I hope you can see the mouse. Um, and um, and then the mouse min is the distance to where is the farthest distance that you can see perfectly. The minimum distance at which the darkness should start changing. So that would be around here. You can see there's a radius right there where we can see everything. And then the radius max is is um, where th th it should be completely dark. So that's where the second um, radius is. So you can see over there, along the outer edge, that's that's where the radius max max forms. And then if we change those values around, you can make the your visibility how far you can see farther or lower, and you can modify it to your liking. So now I'm gonna press play again, and now it's working again. So I'll go ahead and close it. Now let me show you something cool. This okay, so this the sprite width and sprite height are 32 and 32, but in the code, I didn't put 32 down once. If I had, that would have been called hard coding where we put in numbers directly. Instead I used the variable sprite width and sprite height. Because I use the variable sprite width and sprite height, I can change the sprite around and I won't have to change, change the code at all. So right now I'm changing it 16 16. And you'll see that looks better if if the darkness is smaller. There you go. You see how much cooler that looks because I half the size of the of the sprites. But right now it takes up a little memory, so I'm sure when developers, if they use this trick, they have to be careful to make sure they don't use too much memory. Now let's just crash the system just for fun. Let's let's um make the sprite width just one because now we should, now we should get a perfect gradient, but it'll probably crash my computer. See, it's loading. Having trouble. So it's um. It's creating one object for every um, pixel right now. So, let's see, the room is 640 by 480. So, do the math. 600, 600 times four, 640 times 480. So, that is 640 times 480. That is th 307,200 different objects in this room. So, as you can imagine, I could slow it down just, just a little bit. So right now it looks cool, but if I move my mouse, it it takes a little while to catch up. Yeah. So, but it looks cool. So that's the that's the drawback. All right. So um, that's all for this tutorial. I I believe when I, when I made my last tutorial, several people asked how you could make it work with the views because you could make it fill up the whole room with them um, if you're using a view. But if the room is really big, and you're only having the view in a small portion, that would just be kind of a waste to have, the, have it fill up the entire room. So I think I'm gonna make a Another, another tutorial, a bonus tutorial, where and where I'll explain how to do that. So if you're interested, I'll put the link in the, in the description. If if not, then um, you can stop here. I hope you found this helpful, and I guess I'll see you guys next tutorial. Talk to you guys later.